say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers. That's right. And this is our kitchen. This is really our kitchen. This is where we cook. This is where we eat. Mm -hmm. And this is where we left not too long ago to go on vacation. We did. Now, we went on vacation because Nikki wanted to see some parts of this beautiful nation that she's never seen before. I did. And I wanted to fish. Okay. <laughs> so we took the marriage of these two things mm -hmm. and we took off on a trip, a driving trip. So we took off and we went through Indiana, Illinois. Then we went out through lots of corn. We did Nebraska, see a lot of corn. Iowa. Mm -hmm. South Dakota it started getting interesting mm -hmm. up there. Started Pretty. seeing some stuff that we don't see around here. Badlands, it was just a wonderful trip. Now, I remember as a kid, so you go to church and the Smiths mm -hmm. have just come back from a vacation. That's right. So the Smith family at church would say, hey, Mr. Farmer, wouldn't you and your family love to come over and see our vacation slides? I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. So then they you would, would. Did you ever do that? Yeah, that's not, I know. So you'd have to go to somebody's house and you'd have to watch their vacation slides. Guess what tonight is? Our viewers get to watch their vacation slides. That's right. <laughs> a few of them. And they so, probably had a station wagon, didn't they? They did. With wood on the sides. Okay. We had one of those. So do we. We didn't have the wood on the sides. We had wood on ours. Like it's the really Griswold. fancy. So anyhow, we took a trip out west. Now we've been to almost, I've been to all 50 states, you've been to almost all 50 right. states. And we've seen some really cool stuff along the way and we're always searching for food ideas along the way. That's right. So here's what happens. I say, let's bring some healthy snacks, mm -hmm. which we intended to eat. Right. And we get one day down the road and what do you say? We're on vacation. Exactly. We can we eat want. whatever we want. That's right, when you're on vacation. So this turned into um, ice cream. It was fun. This turned into hamburgers and french fries mm -hmm. and hot dogs. Fast food all the way though. Fast food yes. all the way. All right. those snacks just sat there and looked mm -hmm. at us. By the time we got up there and got settled in, in Montana, where we were fishing, I noticed I was packing a little extra weight around. That's okay though. You're older, you need to have a little extra meat on your bones. All right. So what happens when you put on vacation weight, you want to take it off in a healthy sort of way. Right. Everything we do tonight, for the most part, is going to be a fairly healthy way to eat and drop some pounds. What a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. It, yeah, it was. So last year, I had the most phenomenal trip to Montana I've ever had. You did. Caught big fish after big fish after big fish. This year, once we got out there, you couldn't see a mountain a mile away for the smoke. Right. The temperatures were high. Mm -hmm. It was hot. Trout or cold water fish, the water temperatures were going up as the water was going down, was right. receding from the heat, and the farmers were irrigating, so on and so forth. So they started shutting down the streams. It was very sad. We were heading out west before all the trouble with the streams right. to meet our friends, That's right. the Duncans. Now we went out there and we fished together. Here's some footage of us catching fish before some of the water got shut down. Right. Sharon caught a nice fish. Oh, she did get a good fish. Uh, Jim caught some nice fish. I got some nice fish. And uh, we saw a lot of uh, bison. We did. Out there. We stopped on the road. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Ted Turner's ranch is out there. And That's we, right. He's got a bunch of bison. Yes, he does. So as we were traveling around, fishing and eating candy bars. Sharon and I, we made two nice pies, too. We, we made some really good pies. We made mm -hmm. an apple and a pecan. It was breakfast. <laughs> Then we got some terrible news. Your wonderful cousin. Yeah. Probably one of the best human beings on the face of this earth. You're right. So involved in his community and church and family. I have never in my life seen a guy. Like him. Here's a picture of this wonderful guy. This is Daryl. Wonderful guy. And 
I decided since we had to come back through Oklahoma for that, right. we rerouted into Arkansas. You like that, didn't they you? they didn't have any problems with their water flow. That's right. The White River is an amazing fishery, trout fishery. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the, the world record is? What? 39 pounds wow. on a brown trout. Take a look at this brown trout, 39 pounds. So anyway, couldn't find any guides. Went to one last fly shop. You did, you were One sad. guy had a cancellation. And this, and this great guy took us out and had a great trip. We did. Wonderful day. We actually took some video. And on this video right here, you'll see us going down the White River mm -hmm. with Ben. That's right. Great kid. Good kid. Now he's not a kid, he's married, a young man, but- 25 is a kid does. Now that I'm in my 30s. That's right, and I'm in my 20s. He's just a great kid. He was a great he kid. He knew his stuff and we had a great time with him. We're fishing with Ben Woodard on the beautiful White River. You were in Montana. I was in Montana, I love Montana. But drought conditions, high water temperatures, it was kind of an off year, was it not? Correct, uh, by the first and second week of June uh, in Southwest Montana, things were pretty much done for this season. It's looking very good. On the way home is the White River. Everybody's booked up. You had a cancellation last minute. I got on board this morning. And what happened? Caught a lot of fish. Caught some good fish. <laughs> Big browns. Look at these yeah. browns right here. Yeah. Now, Ben has been fishing this river for, for quite a while. If he, if somebody would come down here, what might they expect a typical day of fishing would be? Um, so water varies, but the fishing kind of stays consistent. Um, you can always expect to catch a handful of rainbow trout. Gotcha. Um, and then we hunt for the brown trout. Um, and some days are better than others, but it's a good day. It's a good day. Yeah. And, and, this time of the year, from the spring all the way through September, October, is a great time to come to the white for brown trout. There's, they're hungry. They're out. Now, for you folks who don't fish that much, but and we were here to catch. If I caught one 20-inch brown trout, I'd be really happy. Twice. Well, man, so, I tell you what, I enjoyed myself so much. I think that maybe next spring we might do a smallie slash two-day deal. Yeah. Good trout. That'd be the way to do ben, it. Ben, you're the man, buddy. I had fun. I so. Thank I you. It. I don't keep my trout when I'm fishing unless they have maybe ingested the hook too much and something happens and, right. they, and they perish. Right. I'm not crazy about farm-raised trout, but when I want trout, I can find some somewhere. Mm -hmm. The way that I like trout more than anything is... Smoked. The only way. And here's what happens when I make smoked trout. I'll get it and I'll eat it and I'll love it. And then it disappears because she takes it and makes something out of it. Turn into pate. Oh. So good. So good. So she makes a trout dip or a pate that's just absolutely wonderful. Tonight, we're going to smoke this trout. We're back from vacation. That's we right. got to crack down. We're going right. to make some soup. Now, you got to go according to your doctor, but this is pretty healthy soup it is. overall. That's our snack on that's the right. side. That's our healthy snack. That's on the our side. appetizer, kind of. And we got zucchini squash and yellow squash coming out of our ears. So, what are we going to do with that? That's probably the most, I won't say unhealthy, but out of all it's this. It's still a vegetable. It's good for you. So anyhow, we have some semi-healthy snacks to That's help right. you lose weight after the vacation. So anyway, here's this fish staring at me right here. Now you can take the heads off or leave them. Now, this is my brine that I use for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Normally on this recipe, I would use a little more sugar. I'm going to cut the sugar in half on this recipe for this brine to make it a little less caloric. So here we go. Per eight cups of water, I'm gonna do about three quarters of a cup of kosher salt, a fourth cup of brown sugar, a fourth cup of white sugar, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of black pepper. Now this is important I think for fish is one tablespoon of lemon pepper. I'm gonna take a half a cup of soy sauce, a little bit of hickory smoked seasoning, and about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Now you can heat this up and you can dissolve the salts and sugars in this, or you can just stir it well in, in the warmer water until it gets where it needs to be. All right, so now we're gonna take this concoction, this brine, and we're gonna pour in this pan and cover a little trout. Then we're gonna cover this, pop it in the fridge for six to eight hours. Obviously, the longer you leave that in, the more salt it's going to take in. So now, with fish, you want to get that temperature up to 160 degrees. Mm -hmm. 
So you want to cook it from 200 to 225 degrees. You could even do a little warmer than that if you wanted to. You need to let that get 160 degrees for at least 30 minutes. So you can put okay. a probe in there or whatever. When that happens, you're good to go. Then you can put these in the fridge. That's right. Years ago when I was bear hunting in Canada, Northern Ontario, I went into these gas stations to get a snack, an unhealthy snack because I was on vacation. You You're know. starving, that's right. And you know what they had in there? What? What Smoked they trout. Really? Different kinds of trout. That was good. Oh, delicious. it was delicious. And every piece I tried was different. I thought, man, right. I, I gotta get me some of that. So now you're so making we're it. we're gonna get me some of that. So let's pop that in the fridge. And... Are you? Now again, if you're smoking the trout, you want to do it until that temperature gets up to 160 degrees for a solid 30 minutes. And usually that's a couple hours, right. usually two, two and a half, three hours. But just make sure you reach that 160 degree level for 30 minutes. Alrighty. And you're good to go. You did good. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's pretty. Our show has uh, maybe got a Western theme to it, would you say? I do. Listen to the Western music in the background. Oh, is that not special? So we saw bison out there. We did. So we thought we got trout. Oh, you want to try the trout, by the way? I would like to try the, like the trout. Try Looks like you had a little taste. <laughs> maybe I did. <laughs> Kelly I snuck some out of there too. Did she? Mm-hmm. Now look at that. Look at that. It just breaks. I did that just so I can get a piece of it. Mm. Mm. Yum, Papa. Isn't that good? Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 That's excellent. Wow. All right. Oh. Mm. 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 Oh, that's really good. I it just keeps that. on. I could just eat that for dinner. That's a healthy snack. Yes, that is kind a good snack. No, I like it. So we're having our cabbage bison soup. Mm -hmm. And when you think about bison, you think about B12, B6, B3 vitamins. It's chock full of it. When you think about cabbage, you're talking vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Massive quantities of vitamin C. Now, when you think about the carbs, there's, there's no carbs here. Right. And a cup of cabbage, uh, it's estimated between... 3.5 to 5 grams per cup. Okay. So those are good carbs, and yeah. a lot of that comes from fiber. So what we're going to do, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. as usual, is cut an onion up. Because onion's wonderful. A yellow sweet onion. And I'm going to find some olive oil, which I found right here. I'm going to go ahead and warm that pan up for you. So there are lots of cabbage soup diets out there. Right. And it can be pretty bland or it can be pretty good. We've mm -hmm. had kind of Italian flavored where it tastes almost like spaghetti. Right. We're gonna take this and we're gonna make it taste like chili. Now the end product is not gonna be something beautiful that you're gonna see on a magazine cover because the nature of cabbage soup is not, ooh, that's a beautiful dish. But you do make it kind of look beautiful. But we're gonna, we're gonna spice it up, it up. we're right. gonna dress it up. And we're gonna have a chili, a very good chili taste. Now we got chili powder, we got cumin, I'll tell you all that in a minute. And bison's good, it's like a little stronger, isn't it, than a beef? Bison is its own thing. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's mild compared to some things that people say have wild right. game taste. Like in between deer. deer and hamburger, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. I like it's great it. stuff. So again, the American bison roamed the range. At one point, there were 50 million running around. Think about wow. that, 50 million. Now when the railroads came in, folks were shooting them they would advertise hunts off the train. You could shoot them from the train. And the sad part is the Plains Indians, that was their everything. They used the hides, they used the horns, they used the bones. Every part of that animal they cherished. Mm -hmm. And sad to say, towards the end of the 1800s, there were like 1,500 left. Wow. They were almost gone. So they brought them back hmm. through ranching and when we went to Yellowstone last oh. year, what did we see? They were right beside us by the car. Right I love there that. They were walking by. <laughs> That's another reason we went out to the West. But it's good for you. It's lean. All right, dump those in. Yum. Cabbage. It's got some fiber in it. But the vitamin C, what a great source for vitamin C. Mm -hmm. A cup has 48% of the amount of vitamin C you'll need in a day. Really? Yes. I look these things up. I'm fascinated by food. So I know that you're going to be so sad, you're going to miss some of your fried foods. So tonight, I'm going to fry you something. Fry me something up, just a little fried something. something. Okay, I think thank you'll you. like it. All right, let's pop in our pound and a half of bison, not buffalo. That's right, bison. So now you could use less meat if you 
wanted to do. So we like a lot of meat. I in liked that. a lot of meat in it. And again, there's no carbs. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take about five cups of diced tomatoes. I'm going to use a head of cabbage and we're going to start off with about four cups of chicken broth. And if you want, you can go ahead and start cutting this guy up. And don't you love a CSA? Yes. If you're not able to grow your own stuff, check your area all over the United States for a CSA. If you're not able to grow it yourself, we are growing more meat on our farm, more protein, and depending more on the CSA. We're not growing as many vegetables. When we'll probably switch that up in a year or two. Take some of those fields out there and go back to growing some more veggies. But I'm always going to have a CSA. So we have to, like to have little bite-sized chunks here. Now you might think that sounds strange, a chili tasting cabbage soup, but who doesn't like chili? Yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna come back with some tomatoes. Yum, yum, yum. What'd you say, you had about five, a little over five cups here? Roughly. Roughly, okay. Then we're gonna come back with our stock and beef would be just fine. We just happen to have more chicken than we have beef at the moment. Now, Mrs. Farmer, if you'd like, let's go ahead and start putting Put in that cabbage. cabbage in there. It's hard to believe this all goes in, but it kind of cooks into it, doesn't it? It so really good. makes something nice. Now, what I'll do most of the time is I'll let this cook for a good solid 45 minutes or so until the cabbage really starts getting wilty before I even spice it up. All right, so when we fix our soup and our chili, we like a lot of cumin. Mm -hmm. I like that almost as much as the chili powder. We're gonna go here, we're gonna start off with a tablespoon of chili powder. Equal parts cumin, that seems like a lot, but yum. We got about a tablespoon and a half there and we'll keep adding as we go along. Salt, Salt. to your taste. We also have <laughs> cayenne. Go easy. I'm going you easy. You like it hot. Because of that, we I had a really happy surprise the other night. Then smoked paprika. I'm gonna go at least, say a teaspoon and a half of that. Isn't that paprika? Paprika. Paprika. That's paprika. Right. Paprika. And coriander. As much of that as you want. I'm gonna do like a half a teaspoon of that. And if you want some black pepper. Kind of have pepper. A little black pepper. And if you want some onion powder. I know we already got onions in there, but I like that. It's a good flavor. It's a different flavor. If you wanted to add a little bit of beef stock, bouillon, we'll put a little bit of that in there. And then we're gonna see where that gets us. As we move along, if we don't have enough salt, we'll put a little salt in there. And that's just gonna cook and cook better and better. cook. So now, I know you want some fried. I do some on fried. We haven't anything fried in a while. So here's what we're gonna do. As a kid, I loved fried squash. Mm -hmm. There was something, um, I guess it's from the cornmeal, that almost had a popcorny taste. Oh, that's, that's true, yes. Oh, I loved Delicious. it when mom would make that. That was a treat that we got every now and then. Absolutely love it. But one thing that I want to make sure of is tonight, I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of crust. That's we right. Had plenty of batter <laughs> on there. I wanted it to stay on there. So I basically took our yellow squash and our zucchini and I just sliced them on a mandolin, put a little flour on them, Put a little egg on them, then put them right in our cornmeal, which I season with mainly just salt and pepper. Now you could put a little onion powder, whatever you want in there, a little Cajun seasoning if you like it. But for some reason, the salt and pepper thing just delish, reminds delish. me of when I was a kid. And so that's those right look there. delish. Look at that. I wanted to make sure they had plenty of plenty. We're gonna need more than that. I could oh, eat those yeah, myself. We're need more than that. But those are just our movie star okay. squash right there. So the soup, as I tasted it, I went a little heavy on the cayenne. Uh -oh. And I know you like yours not as hot, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, just to, for a little sweetness and flavor that it brings in, I wanna put the rest of that cumin in there. And up to this point, we have put at least another two cups in here. So we're at probably a little over six cups of broth. We're gonna take our squash. <laughs> We're gonna turn them over until they're nice and golden brown. Look at that. That's beautiful. Now the thing about the squash is, and when you're frying anything like this, don't go crazy on temperature. Keep your temperature down, that way you don't set off the fire alarm. Don't scare low, all the animals. Yeah, that's right. 
And you can do it the same thing just over time and it gets cooked all the way through better. Oh, would you look at that. that That's delicious. simple, country, delicious side right there. That's a vegetable. That's our that vegetable. That is a vegetable. Yes, I like a vegetable. And the flour on it, that's a vegetable. That's right. <laughs> Cornmeal, that's corn. That's right. It's a vegetable. Our trout appetizer is slowly disappearing. Our snack for the next couple days. Our squash. Can I try one? Well, of course you can. All right, I'm ready. Those are the cool ones over there. Oh, wow. Is that my when you're a kid? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. And I don't. Mm. There's something magic about fried mm -hmm. squash. Oh! Good. Mm, 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 mm. Delicious. You know what? It may seem like a lot of work, but I wanted to make sure mm. my batter stayed on there. I love that cornmeal on there. They have a little bit of moisture. They're going to pick up the flour, which picks up the egg. Make sure when you're picking up the egg, you do it. Mm -hmm. Get that wash on there good. Into the cornmeal. You get a little salt. I like the salty taste of that. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's better than a potato chip. Powder. Better than a potato chip. Do you Delicious. not taste like almost a popcorn blow? That's really good, yes. All right, so the other night, kind of like tonight, mm -hmm. when we were making our cabbage soup for the 14th time. That's all right. You made it really hot. I made it really hot. So here's what happened. I think you said, what am I going to do? It, to me, it wasn't hot at all, but to her, it was very hot. Yeah. So she said, I'm going to put a dip of sour cream in there. And so she put a dip of sour cream in there. And I said, can I taste that? Delicious. It was fantastic. I know that sounds so strange. Oh, by the way, two grams of carbs. Oatmeal and sour cream. Per two tablespoons, I think it is, so hardly any. And then cheese. Why not have ooey gooey cheese melting? That's pretty. You said, I think it looks really attractive and pretty. It's hard to make cabbage soup a superstar. That looks good to me. So, again, you wouldn't find cabbage soup on too many magazine covers. No. But you know what? That looks pretty good. That's bison cabbage soup with sour cream and Mexican cheese. That's Whoa! Yeah, that's, that's a mouthful. That is, I don't think I could have said it tonight. I'm too tired. That's a lot of stuff. You, that's all the good stuff. Can I mix it in? So this is what she did. She mixed it up. And I made it creamy, and it was, like, perfect. And I couldn't stop eating it. And I know this may be a strange concept to some of you, but let me tell you what. This is highly edible. Yes, it is. Now, this is a little, little warm, Nikki. It's got a little bit. <laughs> I like the sour cream. A little bit cayenne. I went over cayenne a little bit. The meat is so good though, but the sour cream tones it just is perfect. Mm. I really like the bison in that. That's good meat. And cream and jelly. It's not quite chili season. You got a couple lbs you'd like to knock. That's about. right. <laughs> Eat this for about 52 days. That's right. Straight. <laughs> I'm about done. That's but. It. We're not on vacation anymore. I know. But we're eating really good. We are. Look, there's only one left. You're gonna to to make me some more of those. I knew that was gonna happen. You know what? We got plenty more yes, to fry do. up. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to believe, but our half hour is gone. Yes, it is. That being said, our Facebook page is growing mm -hmm. rapidly, and we'd like to see you on there. Although there's some hoops you have to jump through that's there very are. difficult. What would you have to do to get on our Facebook page? I think you hit like. Whoa! Yeah. Tough stuff. It is tough. Also, we have a YouTube page people watching us from all over the world. So subscribe to our YouTube page as well. And if you'd like all our recipes, we've got billions of them. Where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And that being said, once again, the food's good, but it's all about good times, good friends, really good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.